Uh, David Barnson is gracing us with his appearance yet again this morning, and he will stay with me for the entire. But you're nine going like this hour. today, not like this. Yeah, right. So yeah. far, yeah, yeah, so far. So it's early. <laughs> what is it? You get a hundred emails a month asking why on earth I can't understand what you're saying. It's, it's probably over a hundred, Stuart. Right, right. Everybody who's emailing loves you. They just want you to understand this okay. dividend growth thing. Okay, enough with but that. But inflation. Yeah, inflation. You're, Absolutely it's coming It's cooling. Down. Very much. And you approve of this? And I just want to make sure that people know PPI leads CPI. Producer prices go down first, and then consumer prices go down. So it's all happening in the right trajectory. This good, is positive. News, good news for stocks. Um, it's good news for spenders, for people spending money, and then ultimately for stocks because it increases profits when they don't have to be impacted by inflation. And you don't care about the Federal Reserve lo uh, rate, uh, lowering rates? I, I don't. They will lower rates. I agree with Lauren that at 25 or 50 is, fi is a 50-50 possibility here for September. The market, interestingly, has a 70% chance that there will be 100 basis points cut out by December. I'm not sure they'll get that much, but I think three quarters of a point by December is very likely. Well, it'll get the market excited, wouldn't it? Well, not. I mean, most of the time the market goes down when the Fed starts cutting because the market has already been expecting it. It's already priced it in. The market's hardly been down the last two years, you may have noticed. Is, is, is that what the emails are all about? No, no, they're, no, they're really limited to one other thing. That okay, you, we'll get that I later. mean, there's other issues that we can get into as well. But the bottom line is we've reported cooling inflation, and that is good news for stocks. Absolutely. David Barnson still with me. You heard the Goldman warning. Um, what, what, what do you say? Do you th does it, looking at politics right now, you think the Democrats could get a clean sweep? White House, Senate, House? I think it's possible. Let's keep in mind, they had it uh, from 2020 to 22. Yeah. And yet, because of Manchin and Cinema, they still couldn't get some of these crazy things through. So a clean sweep also makes you define a moderate Democrat versus far left. And, I, and that's the concern, is Manchin and Cinema are both going to be gone. Um, to me, I think that the presidential race is becoming very problematic. Um, I think that if President Trump was running against President Biden, he was going to win. Right, and right now, everybody's watching what's You're going so on. Sure. And momentum so sure. is reversed. And You're not so sure. I'm not so sure. And, and, and no one being objective can be very confident. There's a lot of time to go. A lot of time to go. Uh, it gets real serious after Labor Day. But what I want to continue to say to viewers and for market watchers is the Montana Senate race is going to determine the Senate. That uh, the Republicans are picking up West Virginia no matter what. They're going to win that by 30 or 40 points. And then they're behind in the polls in all the other states. Uh, Montana is the one that could give Republicans a 51-seat majority. Last word to you. If Democrats sweep. They will push for statehood for D.C. and Puerto Rico, giving you more very liberal senators and four new Supreme Court justices. But I do believe there are at least three Democrats that won't put, go on with that. It's the taxes in a clean sweep that really worry me. I, there you go. If, if you're a customer of Home Depot, you are likely a homeowner and you're waiting for interest rates to fall. So you're deferring renovations, the bathroom, the garage, whatever, until that happens. He doesn't look happy. He's shaking his head all over again. What, what's shake, your problem, David? It's not a problem. Let's just take it in perspective. Home Depot is still trading at 23 times earnings. It's at the same place it was at the beginning of the year. So I agree with you that there is a question about what the robustness for consumer appetite will be going forward. But it isn't like it's falling off a cliff. It's just kind of leveling, kind of flat. Okay. Well, Lowe's is also down one and a third percent on this news. So uh, they're spooked yeah. also. Uh, I want to check out DJT, that's um, Trump's media operation. Yeah. It's down 4% this morning. I take it that's after the Trump-Musk interview last night. And it was down 5% yesterday ahead of that interview. It's down 27% since Harris entered the race July 21st. Ah, that sums it up nicely. So uh, this... <laughs> go on, go on. They're shaking Is their it, heads. No, he's in agreement right now. You know what it could be? I'm just going to throw this out there. It could <laughs> be that they lose $110 million a quarter and that the company is valued at $5 billion. Yeah. Well, and I think it is worth about as much as the food cart out on the corner of 6th Avenue. Uh, NVIDIA. Yep. Got to bring them up, please. Uh, they got competition now from Huawei in yeah. China? Look, the, the, journal, the Wall Street Journal is reporting that Chinese companies are testing a Huawei chip that compares to NVIDIA's powerhouse H100 chip. 
You have any comment on NVIDIA? You usually do. Well, I do, but it's more just about the valuation. The competition with Huawei thing is interesting, but we've always known there's going to be competition for NVIDIA. Sure. You just can't make that much money without some people wanting a piece of it. <laughs> and so they're going to face both domestic and global competition. The issue is whether or not a 60 times P.E. ratio can stand up to it. Fundamentally, NVIDIA will compete and do well, mm-hmm. but will the valuation hold tight? I you vehemently do not know. Well, it's already down 20 percent, but it will, I think, more to go. I'm fascinated by the change in management at both Starbucks and Chipotle. Start with Starbucks. I mean, that, that it's says up it 21 percent just on the strength of a change of CEO. Yeah. That's it. Uh, so, yes. So Starbucks fired uh, their CEO, Laxman Narasimham, after two quarterly revenue declines. This guy's only been in the C-suite for about a year. Um, and they poached the CEO of Chipotle. Chipotle's down 10%. Oh, Brian Nickel okay. to fix Starbucks problems. David? Yeah, we took a big position in Starbucks a few months ago, and I'll be the first to say to everyone watching and clients, we obviously got very lucky here. Uh, we were not anticipating a CEO change, but there's more than just price, but that's the main issue. Pricing power becomes limited. Their efficiencies have st- struggled. Their operational efficiencies, and this new CEO is supposed to fix it. And let's be honest, he didn't get along with Howard Schultz, the founder. And when you bring in a CEO to run someone else's company, you better get along with the guy that you replaced. He didn't get along with him. So they got rid of him. And then look, this Chipotle, we've never owned it. Obviously, this has been one of the best run companies of its type in the world. This is a big hire for Starbucks. Yeah, and up 20% on that hire. That's, that's huge. And a lot of pressure on Brian Nichols' shoulders right now. Oh, yeah. I'm that's supposed to sure. pretend I saw it coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, right. Um, dividend picks. You're the dividend guy. Blue Owl Capital. Yeah, so this is one that we really uh, increased our position in here because it had dipped after being up quite a bit this year. It's a smaller type company, but they do a lot of credit, uh, private equity. They're an asset manager, big dividend, and they're growing it a ton. They're growing it about 15 to 20 percent per year. Uh, and right now it's a four and a half, five percent. We think it's going to continue going higher. But you got to dip in some of these financials here early in August. So now it's a chance to buy a little more. OK, so you might get a capital gain as well. All right, yes, sir. we'll see. Uh, Lamar advertising. You like it? Yeah, they had their numbers come out last week, and we just really liked what we saw with a lot of the increase. They're up about 20% in billboard traffic in airports. So that's a big spot. We know about their highway. They're the major billboard company in the country. And again, you have a 4.5% dividend and a capital gain to boot. So Lamar is a good name. Not bad. David, five out of the top 10 states that wealthy people are moving to have no income tax. There's a political message there, isn't it? Well, it's a political message, but it's an economic message. Sure. Incentives matter. People respond to pragmatic self-interest regulation, schools, as Mitch mentioned, the tax rates. All of these things are driving factors. And this is the whole point about why you want low competitive tax rates. Because if you don't get them, people can compete. And it's the beauty of our country. There's 50 states all offering a different package of tax rates. Yeah, I know about that. David, thank you very much indeed. Okay. Let's have a look at the market. NASDAQ up 230, Dow up 240. This is all on the back of cooling inflation. Is that it? Well, I don't think so, because it, there was quite a lag between the PPI number coming out and when futures started moving higher. So it could be any number of things. And this is something we talk about a lot. Markets don't need a real specific, clear reason to move up 1%. If we get good news on the CPI tomorrow. Which we will. Which we will? Yeah, yeah. the interest rates are already priced it in. Could this market just be off to the races? It's already very expensive, Stuart, so I don't think so. No? Uh, I know you want it. I know a lot of people want it. But, uh, you know, we were very uh, overpriced in in the NASDAQ, and so a lot of that cooling off had to happen. So I think we run in place for a little while. You know what the NASDAQ is up over the last three years as of yesterday? A lot. 10%. 3% per year. That's it? Yeah, that's what a range-bound market does. It makes you feel like you've gone higher when we were... 10% 10% lower than where we were three See, years ago. All I want to do is get excited about the rally. And off Don't the you get excited about the truth? When I come on here and show the truth, the doesn't truth? that excite you? Oh, careful, son, careful. David, you're truly contentious, but we love you. Thanks for I, being I'm here. I'm friendly and contentious. <laughs> friendly and contentious, that's right. <laughs> Be good, son. See you later.